Okay, today I'm swapping out the bushing for the um, starter motor, the transaxle. So this this older one is for a uh, six volt starter, which I have here. So if you look at the six volt starter, you know it has a bigger bigger thing here. I'd show you the 12 volt starter, but it's in here, but I guarantee you this one here, which has the smaller internal diameter, is uh, the replacement. See, it has the same outside diameter. So I had this guy, which just came on the starter, and I think that's just to protect it, but that's not an actual real bushing, so that had me a little bit uh, confused. This is the actual bushing, and so what I've done is I got a this the back side of this little screwdriver thing can be hammered which is good and I got a slightly smaller diameter than this and I'm going to go over and um, put that in place all right so looking here here's the where the bushing needs to go uh, you can see it's still a little bit grimy so you know I have this little wire brush which I can just do, do it real quick Said I'm going to clean this whole thing, but it shouldn't matter in terms of the installation of the bushing. But this whole transaxle is still pretty dirty. I really have only done some scraping. But I wanted to get this bushing in. So. You know, I think that's good enough. I will just set this up here. Put this thing in. So I'll just go in there with this little rag. And then what I need is this little guy has to go right in here so um, I'm going to hammer it in from this side because the, the starter comes in from this side so we're going to mangle one of the sides best to mangle this back side so, you can see it's going in. Go just another couple millimeters. Mm. All right. So here we have the bushing. That's from the back side and. The starter is going to go in on this side. You can see the bushing there. And it's still about two millimeters recessed from there, which should give it plenty of clearance. So there's the 12, 12 volt starter bushing. So today I have two things that I want to accomplish first thing that I want to accomplish because I did the Q 
king, king pin on this side and it is so nice and tight. Um, and this one is still a little wobbly and I have the rebuild. So even though it's a kind of a pain in the ass, I'm going to rebuild the king pin on this spindle here and then reinstall it. So that's task number one. Task number two is, this is a super annoying, but this, um, what do you call it? Grub nut broke off and that's on my right top um, uh, trailing arm. The others are fine, except that I ordered a grub nut kit and it comes with four. So, you know, just to be safe, you know, I'm, these middle ones are fine. I'm, I haven't touched them, but I'm gonna remove all four of the outside ones and I'm just gonna put the new ones in there, but I have to get this off and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to drill that out. I tried welding. I mean, I, I tried welding this to it and turning it, it won't turn. And I think the main reason is that there's a huge amount of compression between this grub nut and the, the, the torsion bar on the inside. And because of that pressure, this is really tight. So if I can drill down and barely get through to where it's touching the torsion arm, I think it'll relieve the pressure on the grub screw. And then in the hole, I might be able to stick a smaller Allen wrench, hit it with two spot welds and get that out. But I said, that's all sounds great in theory. But I mean, look at this. That was my previous attempt. It just is a huge pain in the ass. So we're gonna see if that's possible to, to do. We'll put a little penetrating oil on there for the time being. So that's it for now. I'll go ahead and just uh, make this video and then um, next video is gonna have some highlights of this kingpin replacement.